I would start with some disclosures. As usual, I am consulting several companies and I have re received research support from some of these companies. And, and some of these companies, especially Blue Earth Diagnostics, are, feel, are active in the field of prostate cancer imaging agent uh, development. Um, <clears throat> molecular imaging of prostate cancer, I think, has really taken off in, in recent years, and there are many ways to measure this. Uh, one obvious and easy way is to just look at the number of publications, prostate cancer and molecular imaging in PubMed, and you see that there has been an exponential uh, increase over in recent years. Uh, there are now <clears throat> two FDA-approved uh, imaging agents specifically uh, for prostate cancer. It's the carbon-11 choline that was approved in 2012 for imaging of recurrent prostate cancer. And in 2016, a widely labeled amino acid called FACBC uh, has been approved also for um, restaging of patients with uh, recurrent prostate cancer. However, the, the most of the excitement about using molecular imaging in prostate cancer started around 2012 uh, with the first clinical uh, work that became available with radio-labeled PSMA <coughs> ligands. Um, now, what is uh, PSMA? So, PSMA stands for prostate-specific membrane antigen, as, as most of you will know, and it's a peptidase. And this peptidase is expressed on the surface of normal prostate cells, uh, but at higher density in, in prostate cancer. And uh, the function of PSMA specifically in prostate cancer, to my knowledge, is not really well understood. There are some ideas from preclinical studies, but it's definitely a fact that prostate cancer cells massively overexpress uh, PSMA. And, and this can be then used for imaging purposes by using ligands that bind uh, to PSMA uh, at the cell surface. Um, <clears throat> just some timelines here, how this happened. In, in 2012, uh, one PSMA ligand was published preclinically. That's the first mouse imaging study. This ligand has later been called PSMA uh, 11. And uh, this was then moved by the, uh, in, in parallel, uh, Marty Pomper worked with an F18 labeled compound called, called uh, that also. Uh, binds to PSMA had a similar uh, binding motif as this, uh, as this PSMA 11 compound, which was put into patients, and then the group in Heidelberg about the same time put this PSMA 11 imaging agent into patient. And while mouse images had, didn't look too promising, actually, if you look at this picture of this mouse, patient images were pretty spectacular uh, in patients with uh, metastatic prostate cancer, and led to then pretty quickly uh, many clinical uh, studies uh, testing this compound. Um, what was also important for this uh, development of PSMA ligands is that um, they were, are retained in, these two, in the tumor tissue for considerable periods of time. Uh, so this is an image with an iodinated PSMA ligand, and this shows you now the image is 96 hours post-injection. So once these ligands bind to the surface of prostate cancer cells, they get internalized, and uh, stay in the tissue for quite some time. And this opens then the possibility not only for imaging of prostate cancer, but also for treatment of prostate cancer. And the first studies on this were published in 2014-15. And you see here on the very right side of the slide a patient with widely metastatic prostate cancer, many bone lesions. This is not a bone scan. Uh, this is a PSMA scan, and there should be no uptake in the bones. And after four cycles of PSMA target radionuclide therapy, the scan has normalized, and the PSA has actually decreased to normal in this patient. So at least in some patients, this is also a highly um, effective treatment. What I should also mention is that uh, this, this, these small molecular weight PSMA ligands that really are driving all the clinical development uh, of PSMA imaging were actually preceded by, by PSMA antibodies that had already shown uh, high tumor uptake and then very good imaging uh, characteristics, but the complexity of imaging with an antibody which requires you to image about one week post-injection were just uh, very significant limitations, and, and therefore only with the small molecule PSMA ligands uh, PSMA imaging has entered the clinic on a broader basis. Um, now, what are the potential applications of PSMA imaging? <clears throat> so one is, and I just give you some examples, there are more sessions actually uh, during this meeting that highlight the more specific aspects of molecular imaging, and mostly PSMA imaging in prostate cancer. But what on one is, 
can this complement multiparametric MRI uh, to localize foci of prostate cancer in the prostate, gl prostate gland? And there's at least some initial evidence that this is actually the case and that the combination of PSMA, PET, and MR may be superior to multiparametric MRI uh, to localize disease within the prostate. And the main application that PSMA imaging is now used for is, however, just to stage or restage prostate cancer. And the reason for this is illustrated on this slide here, which shows a really tiny lymph node that you can hardly see on, on the CT scan. And it's definitely not considered abnormal on the CT scan. It's this is per perirectal uh, lymph node. And they would also never be removed routinely during prostate cancer surgery. However, this lymph node showed clear uptake of this PMA, PSMA like and PSMA 11, as shown here. It was then found interoperatively in stain for PSMA and showed this massive overexpression of PSMA that um, uh, was the reason that despite the small size, this lymph node was positive on the PSMA scan. This does by no means now mean that all these tiny lymph nodes will always be detected by PSMA imaging, but at least a fraction or some um, part of the lymph nodes that are not pathologically enlarged can be identified by PSMA imaging. And this has been most extensively studied in the setting of biochemical recurrence. Uh, this is from a meta-analysis uh, that summarized studies uh, that image patients with no abnormal imaging findings on conventional imaging studies, uh, but elevated PSA. And it shows you the, the, the fraction of studies that were positive on PSMA PET uh, depending on the PSA value. And already at a PSA value from, from 0.0.2, this is after surgery, uh, the PSMA PET scans were on average positive in 42% of the cases. And with increasing PSA, the percentages uh, further increase to about more than 90% uh, when the PSA is more than 2. There are some PSMA negative tumors, so this will never reach 100%. But the fraction is clearly higher uh, than what can be achieved with, with, with MRI, CT, and bone scans. Uh, there's a recent study from Sloan Kettering that looked at a relatively large patient population retrospectively with a PSA of le uh, less than one and biochemical recurrence. And in this patient population, the detection rate was only about 10%. So there's a really big difference between the sensitivity of PSMA PET scans to detect recurrent prostate cancer uh, as compared to other imaging studies. Now, what are the consequences for this? I think one of the consequences that's probably most immediate is that the definition of prostate cancer disease states may act, will probably change um, because you can now stage a disease with such higher sensitivity, some of the diseases will probably just disappear. And then one example for this is this non-metastatic castration-resistant prostate cancer. Um, there's a study published uh, just last week in clinical cancer research that looked at 200 patients uh, with um, rising PSA, castration-resisted prostate cancer, no evidence for metastatic disease on conventional imaging. But when you look at this tree, what was actually found then on the PSMA PET scan, you see that 55% of these patients had M1 disease on the PSMA PET scan, and 54% of these patients had N1 disease in lymph nodes. So overall, um, this, this disease entity of, of non-metastatic castration resistant prostate cancer probably doesn't even exist because most of these patients have actually met metastases that are just not visible on conventional imaging studies. Another consequence uh, of this high uptake of these ligands uh, within a prostate cancer metastases is the therapeutic application of PSMA ligands. And this is just one recent imaging sample from Munich here in a patient with metastatic castration-resisted prostate cancer after chemotherapy, uh, several bone metastases prior to treatment. And the patient was then treated in Munich uh, with two cycles of PSMA INT labeled with the, uh, <clears throat> with the beta emitter lutetium-177. And you see there's automatic improvement in the PSMA scan and also a marked decline of the PSA. So this kind of ligand combine really imaging and treatment of prostate cancer. And I think this is a, a major strength and, a, and phase, three, a phase three clinical trial is currently ongoing uh, that, that's, that will probably, or we hope at least, uh, lead to the approval of, of, um, of a lutetium labeled PSMA agent uh, for the treatment of metastatic uh, prostate cancer. 
However, this so-called uh, theranostic approach, this combination of imaging and therapy, doesn't necessarily have to be limited to these very advanced stage patients. I think it can also be helpful uh, to treating patients at early stages of recurrent prostate cancer. And one example for this is a so-called radio-guided surgery. What you, what you see here is another example of a patient with rising PSA after treatment, and it again had this perirectal lymph node metastasis. So very small lymph node, definitely not abnormal on the CT, but also very hard to find interoperatively. And so uh, an imaging approach has been um, developed, it's called so-called radio-guided surgery, where you inject a technetium-labeled PSMA ligand on the day of surgery, and then use an, a probe to localize the lymph node interoperatively, and then also use the probe to confirm that you have removed this lymph node. And with this so-called radio-guided surgery, it's at least pop possible uh, clinical trials can now be performed in patients with oligometastatic prostate cancer and, and to see if resection of these metastases improves the prognosis of patients where disease was detected early on by PSMA PET imaging. Um, despite all these advantages of PSMA PET, I don't want to leave you the, with the impression that PSMA PET is perfect. Uh, there is certainly uh, loss of PSMA expression in some of these cancer at later stages, and this is illustrated nicely in, in this patient here that was imaged with a PSMA ligand. This is his PSMA PET scan, and this is his FTG PET scan. And what you clearly see here in his pelvis is that there is disease that is FTG positive and shows no uptake of those PSMA ligands. So prostate cancer is heterogeneous, obviously, and it can lose expression of PSMA at least at later stages of the disease. So I think it is important also to look into new ligands for imaging of prostate cancer. And one of these ligands that is currently being investigated is a ligand for, for GRPR, which stands for gestin releasing peptide receptor. This is a G protein recoupled receptor that uh, has been known to be overexpressed in prostate cancer already for several years. And um, imaging studies are now underway that show that GRPR ligands are also a very sensitive way to localize prostate cancer, as shown in this example here that shows the uptake of this GRPR ligand in primary prostate cancer, nicely corresponding uh, to, the, to the histologic finding of prostate cancer in this patient. So to summarize, um, we have two approved, uh, FDA approved, uh, uh, molecular imaging agents uh, in prostate cancer, choline and, and FACBC, both for imaging of recurrent prostate cancer. Uh, and there is this a lot of clinical work currently ongoing uh, in, 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 in this new PSMA ligands. And these PSMA ligands have shown a very high sensitivity to localized prostate cancer. And this earlier localization of prostate cancer lesions may change the classification of prostate cancer and may lead to new treatments in patients with early recurrent prostate cancer. And it also opens the way for treatment of advanced prostate cancer uh, with, with beta or alpha emitters uh, bound to PSMA ligand. Uh, the impact of this on clinical outcome clearly needs to be shown in clinical trials. There is one phase three clinical trial currently ongoing. Results are expected for 2020. Um, but I think it's likely that PSMA imaging will stay uh, in the management of prostate cancer and will become an important part, especially in patients with recurrent disease. Thank you very much.